In terms of applying periodization narrowly right now, my suggestion is to not get caught up in it at all unless there is a clear bottleneck in something. Periodization narrowly in terms of the way that we were kind of discussing it, I don't think has a ton of direct evidence behind it. Of course, that's only one part of the equation. You have to consider the fact that we really don't think there's any good direct evidence that's examined it. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense to go out of your way to do that from just a physiological perspective. I'm gonna try to summarize periodization for hypertrophy. Let's go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna go with uh, periodization broadly and periodization narrowly. Periodization narrowly would basically say is some sort of strategic manipulation of dosage and or the nature of the dosage over a pretty long time period. So I'm not really talking about like week to week slight changes in volume, but you know block to block that sort of thing or just <laughs> having meaningfully targeted training towards some underlying adaptation that isn't directly hypertrophy with the goal of optimizing hypertrophy in a longer time scale. Um, there's two main ways to do that. The first is to kind of have dedicated blocks or phases oriented towards local or systemic capacity or some sort of like strength expression sort of thing. Or maybe there's another one we're not thinking of or like a primer phase. The other way to do that would be to strategically manipulate volumes of certain muscles to potentially leverage that resensitization effect. That, to me, is periodization narrowly. In terms of applying periodization narrowly right now, my suggestion is to not get caught up in it at all unless there is a clear bottleneck in something, okay? A clear bottleneck would be like the example you gave where someone clearly is just not in good enough shape from a local work capacity or a systemic work capacity perspective, or you're just like, man, something about this isn't working out in terms of their ability to push themselves with heavy weights, even in the 8 to 12 rep range. So we're going to try a dedicated phase, 6, 12, 18 weeks, whatever, where we're really targeting that adaptation so that their hypertrophy training can improve later on. Then if it does improve, awesome, that's a good indication it worked. We're gonna just going to kind of maintain that going forward and kind of have a concurrent training approach. On the specialization side of things, probably doesn't make a lot of sense to go out of your way to do that from just a physiological perspective. Okay, so the application for kind of that narrow definition of periodization for hypertrophy, the application is quite rare and probably not something to get worked up about. Um, but hopefully our discussion on it and workshopping of it was interesting and stay tuned for some coming research regarding um, some additional layers we can, we can add on to that. Now, periodization more broadly would be the practical application of some of those things, right? That would be deloading because of uh, just kind of to feel refreshed physically and physio physically and, and psychologically. That would be um, specializing different muscles within reason and kind of cycling through them based on judges' feedback, based on preferences, based on just having a fun time. Time, time restrictions, too, is the biggest one. Time restrictions, yeah. yeah. Just to, in, in, in a lot of ways to keep training in, enjoyable, right? Or they like doing those work capacity type phases or strength type phases because they used to be a power lifter. Now they're training for hypertrophy and they just want to do some sort of periodization approach. That, again, that would fall under periodization more broadly but it's more practical. Another mm -hmm. example is, okay, we didn't really tick all of our boxes in the last mesocycle just because something kind of has to give. So we're going to kind of add variation and that variation is going to kind of present like periodization within our broader definition of periodization. Um, but it's really, again, more of a practical thing that kind of seems like training is varying from a high level, but it's again, more under this broad practical definition of periodization. So TL really narrowed takeaway is that most periodization for hypertrophy should be practical in yeah. nature. Um, and fancy models of periodization aiming different qualities, ultimately in the goal of maximizing hypertrophy are interesting. I would definitely respect anyone that came up with a model and was yeah. convinced of it. And I'd be very interested in it. But as it stands right now, especially with my scientist hat on and also with my coach hat on of just, again, that not really seeming to be a, a very common bottleneck of some of those underlying Do you think it's worse? qualities? Potentially, yeah. Okay. Potentially. Particularly the weirder it gets, right? Like the, the weirder it gets. Yeah. If, if you said having some cardio in or mm -hmm. having some high rep stuff or sure. having some short rest period sure. stuff just to kind of keep someone in shape, sure. I'd say that's very unlikely to be worse. And yeah. probably so, so maybe if you're going to go that route, keep it relatively modest in the shifts. Yeah. 
I agree. So that's where I'm at. What, what do you think of that no, synopsis? I, I completely agree. I think, you know, periodization narrowly in terms of the way that we were kind of discussing it, I don't think has a ton of direct evidence behind it. Of course, that's only one part of the equation. You have to consider the fact that we really don't think there's any good direct evidence that's examined it in the first place so that you can't really, you don't really have any points in either kind of column there. So then we're kind of left on, you know, theoretical principles and and theoretical mechanisms that we can speculate on and and we can think are interesting, but then we just kind of have to rely on the things that we have the most direct evidence for. And I don't think that this would fall in that category as of now. Still pretty interesting in in the time being, if you want to experiment with it, keep the shifts and kind of the the experimental manipulations relatively modest from kind of the home base of what we think is relatively effective training. But I am always in favor of people kind of messing around with stuff, trying things, um, particularly if there's a strong indication for a given client based on their background that's kind of a blind spot for the research that doesn't have that demographic, for example, um, that pre- presents a given issue. I think that's where this stuff can can be potentially scooted up the list of importance, if that yeah. makes sense. 